I've indicated in the previous uh, uh, session that uh, the, the purpose and the outcomes are the significant way you can be able to sense the tone of what your examiner wants you to end up having or what your examiner wants you to grasp or the important things which are like the highlights which are the need to know basis that you cannot afford to 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 get to your exam room without knowing so if you look at the purpose i can sh you you can be guaranteed that uh, most of the things that you will see in the outcomes on the purpose some of the question you might have already seen in your assignments also if you have already had the access to this uh, 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 document where they say the purpose of this model is to acquaint students with basic biological principles of plant and plant and animal diversity where it will enhance the knowledge and understanding where gaining more insight about the plant and stock animal diversity in terms of their evolution i did say this in the previous in blg 1501 that if you had a one round every time i will mention prokaryote and eukaryotes you will leave these sessions a millionaire because we will talk a lot about prokaryotes and eukaryotes and they definitely prokaryotes if you know about prokaryotes and eukaryotes you most likely will already beg a 40 percent of your exam or the entire max in the whole entire models because they are part of this uh, they are part of this model both blg fifteen one a lot and that ensures the survival of organism within a specific ecosystem and the study of the diversity will motivate and guide students through observation of animal similarities differences and environmental adaptation so which means that the observation will be focusing on the similarities in both plants and animal and the differences between both plants and animals and the environmental adaptation in plant and animal species and therefore the outcomes is where you need to understand the taxonomy the phylogeny and systematics phylogeny and systematics is the uh, is the unit that we will start with today and describe the structure of composition and functioning of prokaryotic cell wall, how plants are adapted to life, explain life cycle of fungi, adaptation, mode of nutrition, and ecological importance. Make a flow diagram of life cycles of plants, indicating the gametophyte and sporophyte. Although you may not be requested to draw, but I recommend thoroughly that if you are preparing for your exam and when you're studying, familiarize yourself and train yourself to draw this kind of diagram, even though they might not necessarily request you to draw, but uh, they will extrapolate and extract questions that for you to get them, for you to understand them, for you to think quickly, you might actually need to have an ability to have the diagram into a picture where you can be able to maneuver yourself so the, the 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 diagram representation it makes explanation and clarity much more simpler in terms of questions that can be asked and identify and discuss the structure of functioning of three basic organs of plant body leaves stems and roots oh, we're going to be talking about the stem and the modification of roots the kind of roots what are they and how are they adapted to the adaptation of roots and all those things you are we're going to be dealing with also describing the characteristics of three plants tissue system that the organs are composed of namely dermal and vascular and ground tissues and also understand the animal reproduction where we're going to be talking about the asexual and sexual where you also you need to define and name the classes of essential nutrients and their functions also understanding the major functionings of the organs that makes up a mammalian digestive system where we're going to be talking about the endocrine circulatory and and respiratory system so this 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 is your objectives this is what you 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 when you are studying every time when you're studying one thing you when they said you 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 you're going to write an exam a final exam next week and today it's it's in next week friday and today is saturday 
and today there is chiefs and pirates if you don't know the half of this you might actually need to skip to go to fnb and be studied so that you are aware you you if you get to exam room blindsided by this you will be in trouble but hopefully none of you guys will be we're going to go through all of this and hopefully it will be helpful hopefully you have a basic understanding and uh, yeah we will have to, and also when you're going through this the uh, information about your lecturers and all the necessity things that you need to know basic things that you need to know the prescribed book books these links if you can just copy this link and paste it in your browsers you are able to 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 it they're able to to redirect you to where there are either a book or an article or slides or notes which could be helpful to you guys so make use of this uh, if you do not have uh, access to internet make sure that maybe you can go to campus or whatever means that you can do then you will have the access to and download this and have this at your disposal that will help you some of these websites in order to access the previous question papers or some slides or some notes you might actually need to log in with account because some may be premium or whatever but using your school account you, you should be able to go by but most of this this they are prescribed one way or the other they must be uploaded or you can be able to access them in the in the model where such as other study materials which you'll be able to access and yes also they were talking about the model and the online uh, uh, utilities please familiarize yourself with all the necessary tools which will be helpful for you either to submit your assignment either to write your exam in as early as now as early as now you need to inquire i'm sure they will do in there's some notification and email you some instruction as to how you should be able to log in but as soon as you are able to have those guidelines and those instruction please make use of them and be familiarizing yourself with those access so that to, by the time you have to write an exam if you are writing electronically you do not have to struggle with the admin side of things you just need to worry yourself about studying and going and writing your exam and pass and uh, yes you will be able to have some student support like you're saying all those and the last thing that we just wanna i just wanna talk about is also about the okay assessment criteria please please look up on your assignment even in this instruction in this tutorial letter they have indicated uh, how the assignment the test or the exams are way in terms of percentages or which one carries more weight which one can you afford you cannot afford to miss which assignment you cannot afford to miss and how much do the assignments contribute to your final mark or your exam mark or your semester mark or however you want to put it but uh, and also look out for the important dates important dates are very good that you do not miss submitting an assignment and anything like that and here they said to complete this model you're required to submit two assessments and then go through this it's got indication of how the way scale of the, the, the assignments is way 30 percent year mark average 40 percent and all that and i've mentioned that the due dates are very important you need to look forward to and be able to be on them on the lookout and we're just gonna uh, we will i will we will have in the session not today starting from next week what we will do uh, assessment quiz it's not the quiz that you will be you will be mugged and then you will be gauged and then your lecturer will use for they will, they will not contribute to your semester marks but they will be very helpful they will be very helpful if you take them seriously and if you take them into account and participate you, you i promise you you will be able to you will be fine you'll be fine i just the long shot of it is that you'll be fine 
we will try by all means that after we finish a, 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 a unit, when we finish that unit, we'll also do some quiz where there will be question in, term, in terms of, it will be in terms of definition, multiple choice, or we'll give one word terminology and give the function of a structure and all of that, describe and navigate through those uh, function of the structures that will be, will be given and will be fine and all that. And also there are to, uh, a talk of but, um, what is it that I want to talk about? About uh, turn it in. What, what do you need turn it in again? You need turn it in, in so that you can avoid plagiarism. Yeah, talking about plagiarism. Yes, and I'm aware that now we are living in a world where things are much more simpler. We've got the tools such as AI tools like uh, well, ChatGPT, but AI, all these different tools which are making things simpler but uh, uh we they, they are there to to assist us they are there to guide us they are there to help you you don't just need to take answers as they are from them so because uh, your lecturers and your examiners they do have a detector where they can detect the ai answers answers from chat gpt so you might want to be careful on that so that you don't if you are writing a long question i know there are some questions which the answer is one if you like name five types of abiotic factors i was saying you need to be careful when it comes to taking uh, information from your ai tools such as uh, chat gpt there are different types of uh, tools which are, to be honest, yeah, they are very helpful, but they are not supposed to be the substitute for us to study or substitute for us to, to do the work. They are just supposed to be our guidelines and all that. And I was saying, still saying that obviously there are answers which it's just one answer. Like if you say name five factors, factors of uh, five abiotic factors that you see in the picture below then you can say somebody can say soil a rock water and yeah if they are there they are there they're just you can just list so you can easily get away or not get away but it can easily be something which is there there's nothing that you can say is a pleasure but when it comes to a, a long answer such as an essay questions where you will just take them as they are it will be a very very tricky situation where you might need to be careful in other words use your own words use your 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 your, 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 your own work and avoid finding yourself to be in a position where the examiner might penalize you and said you have just used the work which is from the ai tool so that there is a detector which will detect all the answers which are from the AI tool. So uh, please do consider that when you are when you are doing your work and when you are doing your assignment. I am not gonna go through the cheating and all that because you guys are not gonna be part of. I do trust you. So today we're gonna start with uh, phylogeny and systematics and speaking about. Uh, plagiarism and uh, uh, academic dishonesty. I just want to put a disclaimer that most of these notes here, I did not, uh, I'm not going to claim and say they are all mine. I just edited the slides which are available uh, from a certain source by a book by Pearson Education, which was published in the as benjamin cummings so most of the slides were derived from that particular book and that particular format there are some uh models and some work which has already been done by this group of individuals therefore some of the notes which are related i extracted them from there so like i mentioned today we're going to be talking about phylogeny and systematics will try to push so that we cover as much units as we can 
so that we may go on to the 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 the, the different units uh, talking about uh, your tutorial letter before i go out completely they also show some questions that they're gonna be on your assignment i'm not sure if all of you have already have this do most of you already have access to this or has any of you started working on this i'm sure this is not the first time you're seeing this it's at the bottom in page 15 of your tutorial letter okay uh for myself yes i've seen the questions uh, yes it's like we do have two assignments that are in the tutorial later but now my question is uh the other one is written semester one the other one is written semester two and that led me to a confusion of not knowing if this module is a year module or if, uh, if it's a semester module no it's a semester, it's a semester module. module you will see that your tutorial letter does say that mm -hmm. their tutorial letter is for semester one and semester, semester two year. but you had semester one so anything that is applicable to semester one that is what you will do yeah so these are the and the, the the other questions that you're gonna be look okay i'm glad i'm glad that you you guys uh already have access to this uh you see here there are questions such as a, a group of speech this is a one word give the scientific term for this i'm not gonna give the answer uh each of the term and all that give the organisms that are capable of production of red tides and the name of the structures that are there and okay there's a hand yes uh, one of the questions requires us to draw and it has to be a hand if you go to question four i go to question four yes by means of drawing a label diagram describe the life cycle of a fan clearly distinct distinguishing the gametophyte and sporophyte generation yes. Note the diagram should be hand drawn. Any other presentation will not be accepted. So it means that it has to be drawn. You, do, you don't have to have like a, let's say there's a, how do you do this? There's an empty diagram where you can just fill in there and there. So it has to be hand drawn. Okay, sorry, just continue with your question. Let me not get in. Yeah. Yes, so like, like, um, I, do, I, 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 I do have a very clear, idea of how the, the diagram should be drawn but okay. my question is so now do i have to take a picture and add that to the assignment or do i upload the picture separately or how 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 do i go do i paste the picture onto my assignment as a document because now i'm adding a picture because mm. i can't draw on on word that's a, that's a, that's actually a, a a a good question because I completed but, the assignment, it's just that now that question leaves me with the question of how do I upload that? Okay, how did you? How did you say? You, you all the answers you just you 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 just type them. Yes. You can just type. Them. Okay, you can. Yeah, you can. But uh, maybe I will need to have like a meeting with your lecture. But if I were you, you know what I would do? I will hand draw, and when I will hand draw then i will do i have seen in the past question papers where your the the other notes but it was the notes which has been scanned and you can see that this is a hand drawing this is a hand written which has been scanned uh, thoroughly so and your phones nowadays can scan uh, and i think you don't need a big printer or a big machine to, 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 to scan and then you can now, you, if, because because, because then, like, for, for 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 me another option would be to to print to to to, to um edit the document and no you don't even need, it, no you don't you don't need and, to print and, and type my answers over it instead you don't need of printing to, you don't need to print it out you can you can you can you can draw on a paper right agree when you 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 answered your question in a word format yes when you put your answers in a word format then you said question four then after the when you have uh when you have uh scan your drawing you can paste it on the on the word you can do that you can also you can copy it 
if if the the the, the diagram that you have scanned is on PDF format, you can just convert your PDF to Word. In that document that you have converted to, you can copy that diagram and paste it into the question four. Or if you don't want to do that, you can do the something that you can. There's a tools where you can match. The, the 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 PDF or you can convert the PDF into Word and then you paste it into the Word document and therefore you 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 attach it as question four and then you save it. I'm sure they want you to save it in 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 in, in a Word document or in PDF and then you submit it like that. I'm not sure if you are getting me. Draw 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 your diagram. After you draw your diagram, you go to you're gonna go to your website. You're gonna you're gonna um, uh, draw in 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 the paper, and then you're gonna scan that, that whatever that you've drawn in, and then you're gonna go and come here and say I love PDF. This is the this this is a free free tool that you can do to convert. I'm sure you know about this, and then. If that document that you have is in PDF that you have scanned, you just scan and then you go here and select where you have put, if it's in downloads, if it's in documents, wherever that you put it, let's just say it's in download, then you're gonna convert this PDF, whatever, into Word. And then that file that you have, you're gonna save it as, PDF or you could save it as a word. If it's in Word, you can just come and say match the, 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 the file and then you will select those files and then you do. But the easiest way is for you to just scan it. When you scan it, you come here and convert it to when you convert it to 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 to, to PDF to Word, then you copy it from your new word and paste it into the one way you have answered your question to. Therefore, it's simple and straightforward and they do. Please go through your assignment and this question. But I'm thinking most of the time, most of when we're doing the, the quizzes and all this stuff, you will be able to get the idea how we should be able to answer some of the, the, the these questions. Right. So today, like I've said, we're going to be talking about phylogeny and systematics, where... Uh, the overview, like I've said, I've mentioned that these notes are it's a combination of your notes in your lecture notes and also some of the extra materials that I've got. So it's just in the benefit of you guys when you're going to be containing all of this. So the overview of this will just be to we did a little bit touch on in BLG 1501 about the tree of life or the tree of life. It emanates from evolution where this chapter describes how biologists traced uh, 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 the, 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 the heredity or where we come from, phylogeny, the evolutionary history of a species or a group of species. So, but most of the questions here will be about, I mentioned about that in the previous one, you will have to find more about the why, how, but here it will be the what is which to the 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 the, the, the taxonomy where you're going to be checking how the taxonomy of species is related or how it is attached to. So biologists draw on fossil record which provide information about the ancient organism. Also, biologists use systematics as an analytical approach to understanding the diversity and relationship of organism, both present day and extinct. So, 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 so what do you understand by the word systematics? Generally, don't go deep, don't, don't go deep. Just your general understanding of systematics. I'm sure when you are talking or conversing with your friends or you just, the word systematics gets thrown in there and there. So. Anyone, we just want to give your brief understanding about systematics. Yes.
if you got the answer, just unmute yourself and yes, shoot from the hip. It doesn't have to be like a proper, proper explanation of what systematics is. Just your understanding about systematics. Because the word systematic is the bedrock of the understanding of this uh, 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 units that we're going to need about phylogeny. Phylogeny and systematics. So your systematics will be how it's, it's derived from, from system. You hear the system, the system that works, the system that we use in whatever institution. You will have a system which you 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 can create that the system to do this is this one. The system to operate this particular function is this one. So even biologists they use the systems or systematics in which they they can they they can they can understand how the the plants and the animals have diversified why are we the way that we are why are we called black people why are we these plants called the way that they are called the name that they are called why are these organisms arranged in the manner that they are arranged so biologists use the systematics in which that they could derive the diversity and the relationship between organisms both present and ancient because the the acknowledgement that we need to acknowledge is that before some uh, organism were not uh, 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 identified or they were not named uh, or they were named or they were just group or they were categorized but uh they i'm not gonna bother you with this question but the advantage that we have now is that nowadays we have more technological advancement tools which we can derive the the, the identification where we can identify species or organism where we can group and categorize whereas anciently it was there were few ways in which we can categorize and group certain organism into particular group into particular groupings but nowadays we do have more te technological advancement not just technological advancement which we can classify or systematically group and diversify certain organism but to also revert back that's where the study of paleontology where we can revert back back million years ago there are people who are working on identifying and in the taxonomy of ancient species these guys are not uh, uh, naming things that they are discovering they're naming organism and individuals which died billion years ago or millions years ago or thousands years ago so that's where the technological advancement is so beneficial when it comes to modern day life of a biologist and currently systematics use uh, uh, morphological biochemical and molecular comparison to infer or to differentiate evolutionary relationships so you can differentiate in terms of morphology biochemical and molecular so morphology is how you see and then therefore the molecular comparison will be your genes genetics genomics identification where we can be able to to identify uh, i've mentioned that uh, I've, 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 I've i've taken this note from certain a uh, 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 book so please do ignore the numbering my apologies about that you do do ignore the numbering but phylogenies are based on common ancestors which are inferred from so fossil morphological and molecular evidence like we mentioned therefore there will be for, for example fossil record where there will be sedimentary rocks which are the richest uh, 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 source of fossils which are deposited into layers uh, called strata it these three layers where you find that there's a river that carries sediment to the ocean sedimentary rock layer containing fossil form on the ocean floor and the second one will therefore be over time a new strata are deposited 
which contain fossil from each time of the period. And the third one will be as the sea level change and the sea flow is pushed upward. Those sedimentary rocks are therefore then exposed and therefore there will be an erosion that reveals those strata and fossil. Fossil record are based or is based on the sequence in which fossils accumulated in a strata. Uh, fossil reveal ancestral characteristics that may have been lost over time. So it's about recovery. It's about recovery where through recovery, you can be able to identify that uh, actually this individual are from the common ancestor. Actually, this individual show the traits that this modern group of organism portrays or the adaptations that they do have. They are if we can trace back using fossils, it can reveal the ancestral characteristic that may have been lost over time. Then again, through sedimentary fossils are the most common where paleontologists study a wide variety of fossils. And through those variety where you can see here in the diagram A, where we're talking about the dinosaur being evacuated from sandstone, perified tree in Arizona, about 190 years old, leaf fossils, about 40 million years, and the cast of the ammonites, about 375 million years old, and also the, 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 the boy sitting in an 150 million year old dinosaur track in Colorado, and insects which are preserved in a whole. Um, did you guys, um, this is off record, did you guys, uh, but it's an old series, it's an old series, it's an old comedy series, which co is called Friends. Did you guys, any of you ever, just by the show of your thumb, ever notice it, ever watched it? There was a guy who was called, a character called Ross Geller. He was a paleontologist. Yes, it's a very funny a, a, a comedic service where he will also it's also funny he will also have that character had a person who was very knowledgeable about paleontology where he will always argue that uh, fossils are and the rocks they are the representatives which prove that there was life in this format and then where did we come from and as the way that they explain evolution there's a hand I'm not sure if it's a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, could you please send the link to the textbook if you have it? Yes, I will. I will. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't mention this in the start of my my my. I will not only share the link only, but I will also share the slides at the end of the when I'm done with the units. I will also share the, the slides, if that's fine with you guys. Unless if you don't want them, I can just share the link only. Cool, cool stuff. Yes, I will do that. Yes, so also morphological and, uh, 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 and molecular homologies in addition, it's, it's, it, so, so homology, what, what does the term homology refers to? Just generally. And remember when you answer, John, we don't, I'm not interested in your, in your deep definitions. You will write that to your, to your, to your lecturer. Just, just, just a light that all of us will understand. Homology, yes, I did see a hand, I note you. Give us the answer. Um, and as much as I do understand homology, uh, <laughs> refers to refers to the to the similarity yes yes between organisms yes 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 so 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 they are trying to check the morphological similarities and morphological similarities when they are tracking down yeah you are very very hundred percent so when the in addition to those fossil organism phylogenetic history can be effed from certain morphological and molecular similarities among living organisms so they when they collect their data they will look into the similarities or homologies in which please also look 
into have in your mind so that if your examiner just throw in a homology into a statement or into a question you know very quickly that he's referring to the similarities that the organism may have and they are able to track or trace the similarities in that particular manner and generally so organisms that share very similar morphologies or similar dna sequences are likely to be more closely related than organism with vastly different structures so that that, that just, is, 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 this is self-explanatory this statement which is just to say already the more similar relatedness you are in terms of morphologies and rarely rarely it's a very rare where but it does okay it does okay where you find that organisms they don't look alike at all but morpho but in terms of dna sequences and dna analysis it can reveal or nah you may you not look each other you might be a yellow bone and i'm a darky but yeah bruh we are closely related we are from the common ancestor and those kind of uh, 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 disprincesses or those kind of traces are likely but the more morphology similar you are morphologically and similar you are in terms of dna sequences the more you are likely to be from a closely related organism rather than if you've got various differences in terms of structure and in terms of your sequences and then sorting homology from analogy analogy a potential misconception or in constructing and phylogeny is that similarity due to convergent evolution called analogy rather than shared ancestry so 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 similarity due to convergent evolution called analogy rather than a shared ancestry is a potential misconception where when you are constructing we'll talk about how do you construct a phylogenetic tree and how does a phylogenetic tree look right about and the example for that is that the convergent evolution the difference between convergent evolution and a shared ancestry what is where how does a convergent evolution okay convergent evolution okay when similar environmental pressures and natural selection produce similar analogous adaptation in organism from different